Okay, golf swing junkies. I'm here to uh, PSA, public service announcement. I'm afraid you have a problem. And the key to fulfilling your journey is to not admit you have a problem. Just keep denying it and keep working on your swing. That's what we do here. That's what we do here on this channel. We ignore the problem and we keep uh, we, we keep grinding away at it. Okay, what do we want to talk about? Uh, golf swing stuff. Talked a little bit yesterday about some of the practical the practical implementa implementation of some of the things. Going, working from throw out backwards, starting to move your hands in the club, and then essentially your arms. Um, and then your shoulders, and then your hips. And as all those things start to go in a reverse closure rate in slow mode, which you've already taught yourself how to do, forward, forward slow mode, backward slow mode. We're doing backward slow mode. Uh, we're going past impact, starting to move arms this way, starts to pull the shoulder, shoulders start to pull the hips. And now, uh, this morning, what I want to mention is the your two observational posts. One, and the most important by a landslide, is your hands. What's happening with the hands? Because the hands, the point of view of the hands, the hands themselves aren't doing anything. It's just a place to view the swing from, right? It's a perch from which to sit, to observe, to observe what's happening with the golf swing. And uh, it's where, it's it's the furthest part of your body. Uh, it's, the, it's the part of your body that's the furthest out on the circle, right? So um, it's where things are changing the most rapidly. And so it gives you the most, it's the last stop before the club, you know, as, as uh, all the energy and all the geometry gets transferred out across the radius of the circle out to the club head, the radius of the club head, which, and that's at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I don't like that term, it's overused, at the end of the day, we'll use it one more time, at the end of the day, you are trying to control the radius of the golf club in a precise manner such that it arrives in the location you want, at the time you want, at the speed you want. So, and your the, the, the last outpost is your hands, right? So the hands are going to, the, uh, the observational perch from the hands is going to determine what kind of job we're doing uh, managing this big, crazy, fast-moving circle we call the golf swing. Um, the other place, though, that we're going to pay attention to is where you connect yourself to the ground, to Mother Earth. That would be your feet. That would be the GRFs. Uh, I think the GRFs are taught right now, my opinion, remember, this is my opinion, uh, the way GRFs, GRFs, ground reaction forces, are looked at using force plates. Um, this is not necessarily good or bad per se, but usually, I mean, they're primarily used um, as a, you know, improving your force plate signature. Um, the metric that's used for your success in doing that and improving your force plate signature is usually uh, communicated through the metric of club heads, right? So you see that a lot on the internet, right? So, wow, we did, we, we gave this guy, we taught him how to connect himself to the ground and use the ground reaction forces more effectively and look he picked up four miles an hour club speed. And there's no question that that's part of it, right? That's that's part of the reason that really good golfers tend to swing with more speed than higher handicap guys is because they, they use their feet better. Uh, they pressure into the ground uh, better, than, than, better than their recreational counterparts. Um, but it's not just about that, right? Because we're talking about speed and uh, location. Speed and location. And uh, that's what's going to determine where the ball actually goes. Not just how far it goes, but where it actually ends up. Uh, it determines all the stuff, right? How you deliver the club in terms of the entire orientation of the club, which is going to produce a certain dynamic loft, a certain angle of attack, a certain location of the face, a certain face angle, all that stuff. Right? So, uh, the feet are doing that too, and arguably that's the more important thing to be looking at. Um, 
I don't, I, I, and I, I don't, I don't know that if you took a lot of these people that talk about uh, force plate stuff on social media, internet, you know, teachers that use it as a tool. I don't know that if you if you pull them aside and said, "What are you trying to do? We're trying to make their golf swing more efficient," and that that means both hit it farther and straighter, right? So they they might be like they would say, "Hey, you're you're misunderstanding me if you think that I'm just trying to give people more clubhead speed and and focusing you know 95% of my attention on that. I'm focusing on all the other things. I want to see all the results get better. So I don't want to be unfair to them, but um, you know people care about clubhead speed, and so that's something that's 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 thrown about a lot thrown around a lot is just you know someone can walk away and say hey i'm swinging seven miles an hour faster which is would be quite a bit um and and you know they're kind of determined as the entire metrics for a success and it's got to be ultimately it's got to be more than that at least my project's about more than that um but it's but that doesn't under i i don't want to like i want to make sure that i that I put the right emphasis on how, on how important it is to look at that stuff and understand what's happening at your feet because that's connecting you to the ground and that's your other that's that's the other uh, measurement that's going to have a large impact on what's happening in terms of how you move your body in the club right so um, if the hands are the most important place to be able to manage things and to build things and to observe the goings on of your golf swing. The other place, which is not quite as important, but pretty important, is what's happening at the feet. So if we go back to what I was saying yesterday, um, I, ha I always have way too much table clearing before I actually make my point, and I'm sure that's annoying to listen to, but you know, the rude diva does that, that. He's rude in that sense. He makes you listen to stuff you don't have to actually have to listen to. Part of the navel gazing procedure. See, I'm doing it again. Um, so when we <laughs> when we talked yesterday about moving the club back, moving the hands and the arms and the shoulders, shoulders pulling the hips in reverse order, reverse slow mode, uh, and in reverse closure, closure rates. Um, as you'll start to get a sense of the way the hips should move. Like at least that's my contention. It seems obvious to me. Well, you know, who knows how obvious it is to other people, but it seems obvious to me. If you sway your hips too much or you spin your hip behind you, going back, that'll feel weird. Now, where you'll notice it feels weird, uh, and this is why I'm talking about the feet, the feetsies today, is because um, that's part of what will make it feel weird, is that as you move the club back, if you were to let your hip turn behind you too much in reverse slow mode, you'll feel your weight go just peg right at the right your right heel very quickly, right? And so that won't feel right. And your hip will actually be moving the weight into the heel and then it'll actually move, try to move the weight off the heel backwards toward your left foot, right? And then if you sway too much, if you were to do that dance step I'm talking about where your right heel comes back down and you just go into full reverse sway mode and don't add some turn as you get into the back of the box, the hip turn box, yeah, then the, then the weight's gonna be pushed out toward the ball of your right foot. And we know based on the signature of good golfers, it basically goes from kinda somewhat near the middle of the instep of the right foot, and then the force signature on the plates will go toward the ball of the left foot. So you should be have a lot of weight. Uh, that's the initiation of the downswing. So you should have in, in throw out, you should have the wheel, the, the weight has already gone to the ball of the left foot and then moved in toward the left heel, right? And kind of more going toward the outside of the left heel. So that's where you should be when you start your reverse slow mode procedure. And then as you pull your arms back, your hands and arms back, and it starts to pull the shoulders, you should feel the weight go toward the ball of your left foot, right? Because we're going doing everything in reverse. And then front, as you continue to have the shoulders be pulled by the arms and then the shoulders pull the hips, the hips would then start to pull you in toward your right, kind of the center of your right instep, maybe favoring the heel slightly, uh, but not too much. Just a little bit into the heel, mostly in, in the middle of the instep. So that's another way to observe things and then to put together in your mind in slow mode what's actually happening in the golf swing. You're doing it in reverse, but it's telling you what's gonna happen when you start actually swinging the club the correct direction. So that's some more, some more semi-practical stuff as far as the reverse slow mode in terms of what it teaches us. That's one more observational post to be paying attention to. Uh, the hands are driving it, the procedure, and you're observing the reactions at the ground, thus the ground reaction forces. So. That's some, some uh, what's today? Friday. That's Friday. That's the Friday morning tech series. Uh, don't know if I'll do much 
more today or this weekend, maybe next week. But chew on that, my friends. See what you think. See ya.